So I'm going to go back. This is the last slide overall. I'm going to go back and fit logistic regression using Bayes GLM with a sepsis data set. So if I use, in this context, if I use 50% as the cutoff to classify whether or not a child gets sepsis or not, there actually was, wasn't a single situation where this model predicted a child getting sepsis. So one of the advantages of logistic regression, and I unfortunately, I'm sorry, I didn't do much research about this in the naive based context, I don't know if it can be done, is, but in logistic regression, I can change the cutoff values for, for in the context of my problem to get better classification. Uh, here I chose the cutoff as 0.1. The correct classification was 99.5%. At 0.05, it was 99.14. At 0.025, 98.2, and 0 0.01, 94.9. Um, it depends again on the context of your problem, which one of, this, which one of these cutoffs is going to work best for you. If all you care about is classifying a child as having gotten sepsis as having gotten sepsis, you don't care as much about the overall classification rate. You care more about just classifying this particular column correctly. Um, but there's also a caveat in that. Doctors don't like uh, ha a lot of false alarms. So in this situation, we have, I don't know, like 30 false alarms for every correct classification, a doctor is going to stop paying attention to the model that you build after a while. He's not going to, in most situations, he's not going to want that. So I just want to stress that from the decision theoretic context that the model you use, the cutoff you use, is going to depend on your goal. And you can, sac you can sacrifice classification rate to have higher, to accomplish your goal with more accuracy. So this is the end. Do we have any questions? OK, sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you go back to the graph of the sepsis data? I just you went through it kind of quick. I didn't quite follow it. Oh. Uh, yeah, well, the right, yeah. So, so IPT is one of your variables, A and C one of your other ones? Yeah, and then we have age in three different sets. Okay, and then the red is the case yeah. So this was classified correctly 98% of the time using a naive based model. Was it, what was the proportion of people with sepsis? Extremely small. It was like 244 out of 60, 60 something thousand. Okay. So because that everybody has not had it, how, what's the classification rate? Well, you should do that and present next week. <laughs> in those classification rates, are they done on, like, is this done on a training set still, or you're not doing? I didn't do, like, cross-validation or yeah. have test sets and to stuff. see how it performed. In yeah, I didn't do any of that. I mean, that, yeah, that's something that you'd want to do in a, in a real setting, but I didn't do that. Anything else? Um, so the training set that you use to get a probability was different from the prior that you used. No, like, in what, like in what context? I'm not really sure. Um, I, I think I'm just as time went on, I kind of confused myself as to what the prior is and what the training yeah. set is. Okay, so the prior, or it's not. When you use a training set, it's not really a prior. It's just the, pr the proportion of people who get sepsis and the proportion of people who don't, and that's the class probabilities you apply. If I have prior information about the prevalence of sepsis in the population overall, then I can incorporate that into the, my model. But as the default option, it's going to use the class probabilities as that. It's not really prior information, but it's just called that in this context, or not It's in this function. Anything else? Yeah. Can you repeat uh, the name of the book that you recommended? Uh, there are tons of them. So it's online. It's going to be, so I used a bunch of books. I really liked Andrew Gelman's book. It was easy to read, but I only read 10 pages of it. It was only <laughs> the generalized <laughs> new model. <laughs> um, Jeff Gill, Bayesian Methods, for so and it has to do with a social science approach. That was pretty good. I haven't read much of, much of the Bayesian choice. I've only read the first chapter. But that's like much more theoretical. But it presents Bayesian statistics in a decision theoretic context, which is really, to me, the crux of statistics in general. So that's something that you might be interested in. 
Another one you mentioned was the um, oh, Albert's book. Bayesian computation with R. Which, at least a year ago, that's what we used in the base class last year. And it's, unless some things have changed, that, I think it's a yeah. Springer book, so that should be freely available to students. I'm pretty sure I got it for free, yes. Yeah. 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 I think it's probably still it. That's it? Anything else? Sweet.